Olympics? We're going to check in with someone who knows a lot about competition. Apollo Ono is the most decorated American Olympian ever at the Winter Games. He won eight medals in three Olympics as a short track speed skater. He's a member of the Olympic Hall of Fame, and he joins us live. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So um, this, uh, the Olympics, what are some of the storylines we should be looking out for for those of us who don't pay much attention until the, the games actually start? Well, the storylines, I think, are going to be across all the sports that traditionally the Summer Games loves to highlight. So you've got things like uh, track and field. You've got things like swimming, uh, gymnastics. Uh, but there's going to be a lot of stories there. This is a very different Olympic Games than I think one that we have ever witnessed before. One, there's no international fans that are going to be present at these Olympic Games, and there's going to be no domestic fans. So um, it's going to be a very quiet um, but highly streamed event. So, you know, for everyone who's watching back here at home in the U.S., uh, it may seem like a, a much different and more empty environment, but at the same time, these athletes have been pairing for uh, years, if not sometimes decades in this one moment that was supposed to happen last year, but because of the pandemic has been delayed and uh, it should be underway in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, you mentioned no international fans and barely any fans uh, at, at all. I guess uh, this question, two parts. Could, could you have imagined competing in front of no fans? And, and does that change preparation or mindset at all for these athletes? That's a great question. I, I don't think it changes anything in terms of preparation in any capacity or the mindset. I mean, these athletes, they want to win um, just as badly as they did uh, one year ago. I think it is different, though, and anyone would be um, kind of just neglecting the fact that, you know, when there's fans, when there's thousands and tens of thousands of fans, uh, it changes the, the dynamic of the sport in general, right? Some athletes thrive in those environments and some athletes don't do as well. So I think that we're going to see slightly different results um, as we, as we uh, watch these Olympic Games unfold. Um, you know, everyone reacts differently, right? Some athletes once every four years have prepared well and they have never perhaps maybe won a world championship or a world cup medal in the past. And all of a sudden they are the super, the superstar of those particular uh, races or competitions that they're competing in. And then others that have been dominant for five or 10 years, all of a sudden under those lights and under this newfound kind of perceived pressure, things start to change. And mentally, that's where the real game is won and lost, I think, in every SEAL Games. So you've got a book coming out this fall called Hard Pivot. It kind of talks about, I can't imagine making, when you spend all of your time and most of your life training for these Olympic Games, that is that is your life. And then you have to, the Olympics is over, you're not competing anymore, you have to pivot and do something. How did that work for you? Well, yeah, so thank you. The, the book Hard Pivot is really centered around this, this kind of psychological transition that not only Olympic athletes face, uh, maybe more abruptly and at a younger age, where we were married to our original first true love, which was the Olympic path, which was sport, and then at the snap of a finger, um, everything changes, and we either by choice or by force, either injury or age or whatever that might be, um, have to reinvent and have to transition beyond the world of the Olympic space. And that transition is really challenging, right? We've seen professional athletes and their challenges kind of becoming uh, this next career path or pursuing whatever they want to do next. But the Olympic path is also very much in the same realm. And I think that we have seen also during this pandemic many people – who have faced some of these challenges internally. And as we know, you know, and I know firsthand that the mind is our most important and powerful asset. And it sometimes also can be our worst enemy. And so if we stay confined within the, the prison between our own two ears, it really limits our ability to grow, to expand um, and to reinvent ourselves. And so I found that it was really important for me to kind of be open around some of these struggles uh, through my own vulnerabilities and through my own shortcomings and failures and show that you're not alone when you go through these processes this is a part of life uh, but if you can embrace some of these challenges and some of these hardships it will give you a type of mentality that I think is the best of all which is how do we focus on process over prize where kind of externally we're always focused on these things but we need to kind of stay focused on this realm in which we're, we're headed towards so everything I do in my life is is centered around that mm -hmm. um, if it doesn't fit in this category of making sure I'm sticking to my true north, and then I try to push off to the side. And so it's been a tremendous, you know, I'm almost retired almost 12 years now, 11 and a half wow. years, and the transition is never easy. But anyone who's watching this knows um, if you've done something your entire life and 
uh, it's been successful and you feel like that was your identity and now you have to switch to something that maybe is foreign or unknown and uncertain, it's hard. Uh, but you have that capability, and that's really what the essence of this book is all about. Well, one of your favorite, my favorite pivots mm. that you did in the past oh, was your boy. victory at Dancing with the Stars mm. with Juliana Huff. <laughs> it was amazing. I mean, you're, we knew you were a great athlete, <laughs> but not everyone could pull off the, the, the cha-cha dance that mm. you did. It was fantastic. Were you a <laughs> Did you dance? I mean, you were amazing. Do, you still, do people <laughs> still ask you about this? Because I tell you, that was one of my favorite seasons. That's, that's very sweet of you to say. Those outfits are definitely um, very interesting as well. Uh, it takes a lot of courage to, to wear some of those outfits. Um, Julianne wears hers exceptionally, obviously. Uh, it, that was tough. I mean, look, I didn't want to dance in front of like a high school or, or you know college graduation, let alone 20 million fans right? who religiously watch this show. So again, like we have this ability, we have this ability to go beyond what we perceive to be our own normal state. and. Um, it takes doing things that are challenging and hard for us to grow. And this was one of those things. So even though I'm wearing a smile there, I'm probably <laughs> literally about to knock out. Yeah. Out. Those hips are moving independent yeah. of his body. He's My amazing. God. He's an Go athlete. That's you what athletes answer. do. You wasted all that time in the Olympics. You could have been a professional. I didn't, want to say it. I didn't want to say it, but he's right. <laughs> well, it's great to talk to you, Apollo. And for more, you can check out ApolloOno.com. You can find him on Twitter and Instagram. Great to talk to you. Thanks for having me, guys.